Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Anglin and we have been reading through my book, A Dragon's Wish. We're on chapter 14, and in our last chapter, chapter 13, we saw the knights discussing what to do about the dragon, and in the meantime, Desimone was led away and was told by Maria and the minister that Galloway is a good choice for her for marriage. And with that, let's get in to chapter 14. The sun barely grazed the horizon. Its golden light shone through the bricks in the trees and dazzled Severin's eyes. Already it had darkened under the trees in the thicker parts of the forest. Severin's eyes darted about at his surroundings. Nighttime brought all sorts of wild animals who lurked in the brush, most notably wild boar, a vicious animal nevertheless protected by royal law. Only nobility were allowed to hunt and kill the animals roaming in the woods. Severin did not want to meet a boar in this forest. Something thrashed, like a tree crashing to the ground again and again. The lamb around Severin's shoulders bleated. Whatever is making this racket sounds big and close. Severin swallowed hard. Let's go, little one. Time to head home. The lamb bleated in approval. Severin took a step in the direction of home and away from the noise when... Bah! Severin halted. Was that the call of a sheep? He paused to listen. Sure enough, he heard a quivering bleating, this one having a lower voice than his lamb. It was coming from the direction of the thrashing. Severin bit his lip, glancing towards home. I don't have to investigate, do I? I mean, I found you, little one, and it's getting dark. One sheep won't make a difference. He trailed off. One sheep did make a difference to Terran Hall. The way he cared for each sheep in his flock reminded Severin of a story he had once heard about a shepherd who left ninety-nine sheep behind to search for the one who was lost. If Severin had been the lost sheep, he'd want the shepherd to look for him. Oh, blast it all! Severin sat down the lamb and tied it to a branch. Stay here. I'll be back. The lamb bleated its protest, but Severin slipped through the trees. As he neared a clearing at the middle of the woods, he sucked in a breath and dove behind a tree. Lying out in the clearing was a long, lithe dragon. Is it sleeping? Severin thought to himself, his breath coming in shallow pants. Couldn't be with all this racket it was making, unless it's having a nightmare. Do dragons have nightmares? Gathering his courage, Severin peeked into the clearing. The laying dragon was twice Severin's height. Should it have been standing, it would have towered over him. Its mossy green scales heaved with the creature's breath. Two horns protruded from his head, and a set of frills set off where the ears would have been on a normal creature. After a few moments of stunned staring, Severin noted something else. His body was covered in, no, twisted up in, a fine net. The dragon was so twisted it could no longer move, its wings pinned to its body so it couldn't fly. Only its tail and one of its legs were free. The dragon pounded its tail on the ground when it thrashed, but the more it moved, the more tangled it got in the net. It's trapped! Severin ducked back behind the tree, placing a hand on his heart. Lucky me. Now where is the... The sheep bleated again. Peeking around the tree, Severin's eyes zeroed in on it. It stood next to the dragon's head, pulling and bleating for dear life. Just my luck. Severin threw his head back. With a deep breath, he stalked into the clearing. Instantly, the dragon's golden eyes locked onto him. It roared, or tried to. The net had twisted around its mouth and held it shut. The rumbling from its attempts rattled Severin's bones. Severin sidled toward the sheep, making sure to keep his eye on the dragon. Sweat prickled his skin and trickled down the back of his neck. Every muscle in his body tensed as he approached the sheep and the creature. I am so glad you are tied up, dragon. The dragon growled, its lips receding to its gums and revealing its sharp fangs. Severin turned to the sheep. Its neck had gotten caught in a rope somehow. With a quick flick, Severin pulled his knife from his belt and cut the sheep free. Let's go, little one. The sheep bleated and launched itself into the air. Wait! Severin caught his foot. Don't run! Don't you recognize me? Realization slapped Severin in the face. He turned to the place the sheep had been caught. The rope had been tied to a stake in the ground. The sheep wasn't Terran Hall's. It was bait. Severin let his eyes meet the dragon's. You got caught in someone's trap. The dragon snorted smoke through its nose. Severin scooted away from it. This is closer to a dragon than I'd ever want to be. I suppose I can tell everyone I met a dragon and live to tell about it. 
The dragon heaved its legs under itself and tried to stand. Its legs gave way and it collapsed. The force of its blow shook the earth, causing the leaves in the forest to sway. The fading sun glinted through the shifting leaves and shimmered off of something near its back leg. Something metallic. What's this? Sever an inch closer to the leg to get a better look, but not too close. What he saw nearly caused his stomach to heave out the lunch he had eaten several hours ago. A tread trap had embedded itself into the dragon's free leg. Now Severn had seen this type of trap before, though he hated the sight of them. Two wooden valves with animal bone points set in them would snap closed if an animal set foot on the tripboard on top. But he had never seen one like this. For one, it was massive. The dragon's leg was as thick as Severn's waist, but the trap's halves had nearly met each other. Very likely, it was only the dragon's bone keeping it from cutting the dragon's leg clean off. For another, this one was made of metal, and the points were also metal. Blood oozed from the dragon's swollen leg and collected in a puddle underneath the trap. Severn could see red muscle and white bone in the wound. He clamped a hand over his mouth. This is barbaric! The dragon snorted. I can't leave you to suffer in such a thing. Severn rubbed the back of his neck. You're just a dumb animal, after all. The dragon's eyes widened. It snarled and thrashed. Easy, easy. Severn led the sheep he had rescued back to the lamb and tied it securely. That done, he approached the dragon again. Let's get this thing off of you. He peered closer at the leg. What a nasty wound. I'll have to take care of it. Severn scanned the plants in the underbrush. Over the years, thanks to Master Knighton's willingness to share his wisdom, Severn had learned a little about herbalism. He knew which plants promoted good blood and healing and which would reduce pain. Severn wandered about the clearing, gathering up the plants and vines Knighton had told him about. He brought them back to the dragon and dumped them on the ground. Then he hauled a large rock next to them. Let's see to this trap. Severn tried to pull it open, but its metal halves creaked in protest and refused to move. He climbed on top of it. With all his might, he pried it open. As before, the trap protested but it slowly gave way to Severin's tenacity until he could use his legs to hold one side open and his arms to hold the other. As soon as it was able, the dragon lifted his leg out. Great, you're free. Severin's voice trembled with the effort of holding the trap open. But now I'm stuck. The dragon's tail lifted. It curled itself around Severin's waist and snatched him out of the trap. It slammed shut with a sickening clack. Severin froze wondering if the dragon would dash him against the ground or throw him into a tree. Instead, it set Severn down on the grass. As soon as the dragon let him go, Severn darted behind the tree, heart racing. After a moment, he forced himself out into the open again. The dragon's golden eyes were fixed on him. Sorry about that. Severn crept close to the dragon again. You touching me was a bit of a shock, but I see you understand I'm trying to help you. Remember the feeling when I do this. With a deep breath, he walked to the rock he had placed by the dragon and crushed the herbs against it until it made a paste. This is going to hurt, Severn said, scooping the paste in his hands. Ooh, am I glad you're tied up. Severn took another bracing breath and slathered the paste into the dragon's wound. The dragon tried to roar, but the net around its mouth muffled it. Instead, it thrashed its tail and squirmed in the net. Easy boy, I'm done now. Severn removed his outer cloak and tied it around the dragon's leg as a bandage. There. He pulled his knife from its belt. You know, I should leave you here, he said, cutting the net from around the body. You caused me a lot of trouble. Burned my fields, ate Terenhall's sheep, forced me to wander these woods all day. But how can I leave you to the mercy of a man who would divide such an awful thing? As he spoke, he cut the last of the net from the dragon's body. All that was left was the head. All right, I'll free your head now. Don't eat me. Severed slowly and with shaky hands reached toward the creature's head. With a quick flick, he slit the net, swung around and sprinted off, and dove behind a tree, where he stood covering his head with his arms. Please don't eat me, he muttered. Please don't. The dragon got to its feet and stretched his mouth. Ah! It sighed almost in relief. Then it turned its head in Severn's direction. Human, I thank thee. Severn froze. Did he hear the dragon talk? He peeked out from behind the tree. Human, are you deaf? The dragon snorted. I said, I thank thee. Severin's legs gave way. 
He dropped to the ground, staring at the dragon with his mouth agape. The dragon had definitely talked to him. He saw its lips move. I see you are stupider than I previously thought. The dragon turned his attention to the trap. He smashed it with his tail over and over until it was nothing but twisted metal. Much better. He snorted a smoke-filled breath at it. You're talking. Severin pointed a shaky finger at it. I hear you talking to me. Of course. The dragon placed a claw on his chest. I am a dragon. I didn't know dragons could talk. You humans are a self-centered sort. You are not the only creatures in the world blessed with speech. The dragon laughed. Don't you think it more likely a dragon is able to speak than a human is? No. The dragon pulled up straight. Never mind then. There are far more pressing issues for us to discuss. You have saved my life, young human. No doubt the human who set up this trap meant to kill me. I should say so with a trap like that. I... Severin trailed off. Oh no. His stomach clenched. How could I have been so stupid? This trap must belong to a nobleman. Who else could afford to craft iron into such a shape? I am going to get in so much trouble for this. Human. What am I going to do? Severin pulled off his coif and wrung it in his hand. I should have never have gotten between a noble and his sport. Human. What if they confiscate my father's field? Or decide to pull and quarter me, or... The dragon thrust his face into Severin's. Would you pay attention? Severin froze. Foolish human. The dragon sat back on his haunches, being sure to keep his wounded leg out of the way. Now, the dragon's code dictates I am now indebted to you. Indebted? That's not necessary. Severin waved his hands. Simple thank you will suffice. You do not understand. I have to repay your kindness, the dragon said. My honor as a dragon is at stake. You don't have to do anything. Although, I'd appreciate it if you never let anyone know I was the one who freed you. Ever. Oh, and it would be nice if you left my neighbor's sheep alone. And don't burn any more of my field. Hmm. Severin paused a moment. I suppose I do have quite a few requests. Those don't count. I need something worthy of you saving my life. So I will grant you a wish. A wish? Severin coughed his head. What do you mean? I will grant you whatever your heart desires. So come, tell me. The dragon settled itself as if Severin was about to tell it a story. What do you desire? Gold? Power? A kingdom of your own? Whatever it is, you shall have it. Really? Severin forward his brows. Just like that? Just like that. But how? Can dragons do magic? Can dragons do magic? The dragon sputtered. Of course not! It paused a moment. Well, I suppose some can, as some humans do. I once saw a dragon cast a spell over another. I didn't like it much. All the chanting and all those symbols he drew on the ground. He shuddered. Made my cold blood run even colder. If you don't have magic, how will you grant my wish? The magic of gold, dear human. The dragon smiled a toothy grin. You'd be surprised what a little money can do. Now come, your wish. Hmm. Severin let his eyes drift to the sky. My wish, my wish. As he considered the possibilities, a smirk slid onto his face. If the dragon seemed so confident, perhaps he would have a bit of sport with it. If I could have anything in the world, anything at all. Yes, yes, go on. The dragon leaned in close. I would have Princess Desimone as my bride. Severin watched the dragon out of the corner of his eye. What would he do when he realized Severin had made an impossible wish? The dragon blinked. Sorry, but what is a Desimone? Severin's smirk faded. The joke went over the dragon's head. She's not a what. She's a who. A most wonderful person. You should see her, dragon. Her smile is like the rays of the sun bursting through the clouds. Her eyes are still pools of a green lake. Her grace and kindness to her people. The dragon held up a claw. Please spare me your human gushing. He gave a grunt of disgust. So she's a female human. Now, what is a bride? A bride? Severin tilted his head to the side. How can I explain it to you? It's a woman who's about to get married. Married. Ah, a mating ritual, yes? The dragon nodded. You wish for this decimal to become your mate. Essentially. Severin gazed at the dragon, wondering if his jest hit home. I see. The dragon rubbed his chin. This might be tricky. Nope. It had gone right over his head.
Never mind, dragon. It was only a jest. Not everything can be bought with gold, you know. Seven heaved a sigh. Still, it's fun to dream. The dragon snorted through his nose. Then what do you want? I'm not sure. Severin tapped his chin. Give me some time to think about it. Think about it? You want to think about it? The dragon got to his feet to pace. A mighty dragon comes to you, telling you he'll give you anything you desire, and you want to think about it? I want to make a good choice. It's a wonder humans survive so long. The dragon shook his head. Excuse me if I don't stick around while you think. I have other things to do. It spread his wings and pumped them to take off. I will return to repay my debt, human. It called him and took off toward the mountains. Severin watched it go. I don't think I've ever experienced anything so strange in my entire life. Shielding his eyes, he watched the dragon disappear into the gathering gloom. Don't think I'll ever see it again. One human can't mean much to a mighty dragon. It'll forget about its so-called debt soon. He returned to the tree where he had tied the sheep. At least I found two sheep. I don't suppose whoever left the one as bait wants it back so terribly. Maybe Terran Hall will know what to do with it. He untied them. Come along, you two. With a bleat, the foreign sheep followed along after Severin, along with the lamb. Perhaps it sensed it was safer with Severin than without him. Indeed, Severin rushed through the woods as quickly as he could. Once night fell, two sheep and a human would become too tempting a meal for wild animals to ignore, dragons in the area or not. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this video if with others who you think would like it. If you want to pick up the book, the link will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!